Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is Elder Diamond McClam with Throughout Generations Television Broadcast Ministry. So glad to be here with you all on this afternoon. God is great and greatly to be praised. He has continually blessed us all throughout our week. I thank God for who he is. I thank God for how he's covered me and my family. I thank God for all the things that he's doing in my life. And not only just my life, but in the, your life and the life of your family. God has truly been good to us. Let's just give God a hand clap of praise. He's been so good. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. I give honor to God who's the head of my life. To my own pastor, Superintendent Chester Cameron, All Nations Church God in Christ, Gary, Indiana. To our First Lady, First Lady Missionary Teresa Cameron. To the visionary of this program, my own mom, Evangelist Rochelle Melton. God bless her. And I thank God, especially for my own wonderful wife, Sister Kimberly McClam. She is so wonderful. She is so awesome. She is a blessing to me, a blessing to our household. Just a great woman of God overall. I love my wife dearly. And to my four awesome daughters, God has truly blessed our house. Thank the Lord for being saved and sanctified and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. With a mind and determination to go on with the Lord. God is doing great things in the lives of his people. And I know he has been doing great things for you and been showing up and showing out in situations. If we just think about it, think about all that God has done for you. Think about the ways that God has made for you. Think about just what he's done today. Think about your day today. You woke up, started on your way. Somebody got in their car this morning. Somebody made it to work. Somebody came home late from work. Somebody's child made it home safely. You made it home safely. So many things have been happening, but God spared your life. He didn't allow you to get any bad phone call last night about anything that happened. We thank God for his protection. We thank the Lord for all that he's doing in our lives. And we got to make sure that we don't take it for granted. Because I know some things just happen so quickly. We're used to just the Lord protecting us. We're used to the Lord healing our bodies. We're used to the Lord continuously making ways. Making sure we don't take that for granted. I'll say that one more time, making sure we don't take God's grace, mercy, protection for granted. Appreciate it and show him that appreciation. Just in your house, just raise your hand and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I don't take it for granted. I want to say thank you for protecting me and my family. I thank you for covering us each and every day. It's a special blessing what all that God does for us. It is so amazing. So, so amazing. So, wanted to make sure to say this on the air. I said it on the radio, but on last week, last Saturday, actually, the visionary of this program, my own mama, was her birthday. It was her 67th birthday, and we were had an opportunity to celebrate with her. And it was such a good time, and we praise God for me to celebrate with my mom. She's moved down here in the area with us. Um, she lives 15 minutes away from us. For those that don't know, my mom has lived in a separate city for over 19 years of me and my wife. And so it's so good to just be able to drive 15 minutes up the road to visit mom instead of usually the two and a half hours. God is good to us and that she's healthy and all things are going well. God is so good. There is a word from the Lord on today. And if you would, if you have your Bible, if you have your phone, whatever you have, we're going to start briefly with Matthew chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 24. Probably a very familiar passage of scripture for some, possibly new for others. But before we read, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we say thank you. Lord, thank you for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. Thank you, O oh God, for looking over us, O oh God. 
Thank you, O Lord, for protecting our families. O God, thank you, O Lord, for touching our minds. O God, thank you, O Lord, for healing our hearts, O God, in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, if you keep it right now in the name of Jesus, anything that's trying to come against the will of God, the devil is a liar. Lord, God, we ask you even on today, cover your people, O God. Heal broken hearts on today, O God. Lead us and guide us in your way, O God. Deliver and set free, O God, in the name of Jesus. Touch every bereaved family, O God, in the name of Jesus, O God. Touch their lives, touch their situations, O God. Bless every circumstance, O God. O God, we believe that as we're listening to your word, O God, as we're speaking your word, O God, as we're praying for your people on today, O God, that you're working out situations, O God. So where two or three gather together, you be in the midst of it, O God. And we know that you're in the midst even right now, O Lord. Touch heal, deliver, and set free. Let someone be saved today. Let somebody's lives be changed. Let somebody be delivered, set free, and made whole on today, O oh God. Let someone be filled with your Holy Ghost on today, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Whatever time they listen to this, O oh God, we ask you that lives be changed, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, we ask you even right now to word my mouth, to speak your word, O oh God. Lead and guide, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We love you, and we thank you, we bless you. Touch every family represented, O oh God, listening on today. O oh God, keep them and cover them and strengthen them, O oh God, and lead them and guide them in your way. Touch every bereaved family, O oh God. Comfort them, O oh God, and give peace that passes all men's understanding like only you can. We love you, we thank you, and we bless you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Amen. So, turning to Matthew chapter 6, I'm going to start with one verse. Verse 24, Matthew 6 and 24 reads, No one can serve two masters, for either will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And in the reference at the bottom, it says, Mammon refers to wealth, money, or property. No man can serve two masters because a time will come when they make opposing demands. Jesus advises us to invest in our future with him by giving of ourselves. Mammon encourages us to collect material objects for our present enjoyment. And even in that, we know the word says that the love of money is the root of all evil. We also understand that, you know, money is a help. We want to make sure that we don't put anything before God. We don't want to put any money, any person, no one before the Lord. Let me say that again. We don't want to put anything or anyone before the Lord in any capacity. I love my wife. I love my children. But they don't go before the Lord. Love them dearly. But they do not go before the Lord. We find ourselves in trouble when we start putting things and people before the Lord. And somebody may be on here and saying to me, well, who in the world does that? Like, does anybody put people before the Lord? Anybody put things before the Lord? Well, let's take a self-evaluation. You know, just talking as God is leading. A self-evaluation. All right. So how often do you spend time with God? And I know you can't answer me in a way where I can hear you because we're on the TV today. We're on the app. So I'm on the phone listening. But think about how often do we spend time with God? How much are we praying? How much are we read our Bible? How much are we involved in ministry? How much even do we attend church even in person or virtually? And I know that's not the totality of somebody's walk. But let's just think about it. And let's compare it to how often I watch TV you know, on the app. And not just how often I watch TV, what am I watching on TV? What am I feeding my spirit each and every day? When it comes between you spending time with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, and you spending time with God, how many times have you neglected your time with God to be with this other person? And God understands we have responsibilities. God knows that, you know, the things we have to do. We've got to make sure that we're not putting people 
or material things before God. From the basic of the basic, how many of us have, have missed worship because we want to make sure we go and watch that new car and buff out that new car that we really, really, really desire and probably pray that God blesses us with it. And all of a sudden we put in that before God. And I know somebody may say, man, you're getting too deep. It ain't even like that. I just like my car. The rims I got are nice. That's just what we do. But I'm saying, when we're putting things before God, it's a problem. When I'm worshiping a person and I'm worshiping an object, when I'm worshiping money and I'm not giving my worship my all to God, it's a problem. Not just, it's not a small problem, it's a big problem. Because those people can't save you. That car can't save you. That stuff ain't going to send you to heaven. That stuff will throw you off and have you somewhere doing some things that you have no business doing. The Bible says don't give place to the devil. You know, John 10 and 10 says this. The thief cometh but to kill and to steal and to destroy. And the Lord said, but I'll come until you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he'll use whatever, whoever he can to try to kill you, steal from you, and destroy you. And it doesn't have to be in that same way. But he's going to try to get you. But don't be distracted. Don't let distractions come into your life and take away your commitment and your quality time with God. Now to stay focused, sometimes some of us have were really, really focused before life changes happen. Some of us are really, really focused before we start dating that person. Some of us start were really, really focused before. We got that new job and start making more money. Some of us was really, really focused when we were on the bus stop getting rides everywhere. And then until we got that new car, then all of a sudden our desires changed and we weren't as focused on God as we needed to be. If all any of this is stirring up in your spirit, any of this is, you know, agrees, say, hey, that was me. Say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Please, Lord, forgive me. Because I want to recommit myself to you. I want to recommit my time to you. Because we can find ourselves doing every other thing but spending time with God. And sometimes it's not about the quantity of the time. It's about the quality of the time. Because I know everybody got to work. Somebody may say, you know what, you know, the diamond, I don't have that much time. I'm working a 70-hour work week. I got all these other things going on. You don't know what's going on with my family. But that, there's a time where you may not have a whole lot of hours, but the time that you do have is quality time. Where I'm praying to the Lord and I'm talking to him and I'm seeking his face and I'm asking him not just for stuff, not for stuff that feeds me in my own selfish ways. I'm asking him what he, what he have for me to do. I'm seeking his face for words and knowledge and wisdom and guidance, not with a Christmas list, a what I want from you list. I want to spend time with him. I'm taking out a time where I can be in a quiet space that I, I'm only not talking, but I'm listening to his voice, wanting to hear what he's saying to us. Even if he's saying it to us in his word, if you're reading your word and you're praying and you get the unction of the Lord to go somewhere in the word and he's speaking to you right then, but we got to have, make sure we're taking that time to do that. God wants to speak. Spend more time with you. He does. He wants to spend more time with you because he loves you. He created you special. You are a special.
special, anointed, and wonderful person that the Lord wants to use in a mighty way. The problem comes at times when we don't even know how the Lord wants to use us because we're not even going to the source for direction. He wants to use you. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. He wants to heal that pain. He wants to heal that hurt. He wants to move in your life quickly. He's not saying that you have to go and do something in such an elaborate way that it seems unfathomable to you. But he wants your time. If we think about it in the most basic relationship, or even basic friendship, how would you feel if your friend never spent time with you? Ever. you the one that's always got a call. you the one that's always set an appointment. You're the one that when you set appointments, they don't even show up. How much longer would you want to be their friend? How quickly would you have a come to Jesus moment with them and say, you know what, our friendship is not balanced? Or would you just, what they say, ghost them? Would you just stop calling them? Would you block them on your phone? But I don't think anybody that's listening to me today would want to be in a lopsided friendship. And Lord knows you wouldn't want to be in a lopsided friendship relationship, a lopsided marriage. You wouldn't want to be in any of that where you are the one that's giving out everything and the other person is not even bringing anything. We don't want to be in a lopsided relationship with God where we're never seeking his face. Because we know that God is always going to give above and beyond anything we can do. But he does want us to come to him. He talks to us about coming to him all the time in his word, trusting him in his word. And he wants us to do that. He is our father. And he and fathers want their children to come to them. Not just at their point of need, but just from quality time. I'm blessed to be a father of four daughters. And I love spending time with my daughters. It's a blessing when they're asking for something. It's some spending some quality time and learning. Sometimes we talk about it. Sometimes they get it. Sometimes they don't. But that quality time, the things that we talk about, is so important. And it's for the growth of their lives. And talking to them even helps me be better and learn more. Because we're growing together. The great thing about the Lord is he will send you on your way in a way more amazing way than you ever can. And as parents, that's what we want to do to our children. Instilling them so much greater and so much more in them that they leave prepared, they leave focused, they leave encouraged, they leave uplifted, they leave strengthened, they leave delivered, they leave healed from any hurt that's ever happened. That's what God wants to do for us. But we got to make sure that we spend time with them. We got to make sure that we do it. And the thing is choosing him. Choosing him above everything else. Choosing him about above anybody else. The song that they would sing in church years ago and sometimes even currently today. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Meaning, there's nothing that anybody else can do for you that will equal what God does for you. Hallelujah. Nobody else, no matter how good they look, no matter how nice they smell, no matter how close they are to you, no matter how much they tell you they love you, and they need you, and they want you, and that you're this, and you're that, and how amazing you are, can't nobody do you like you, no matter how much money they give you, Nothing, what kind of car they give you, whatever they give you, can't nobody do you like Jesus. And we got to make sure that we're not trying to substitute anybody to, to do us like Jesus. 
There is no substitute for Jesus. You want the true, authentic, loving Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. There is no substitution on all of Jesus. And if you don't know him, it's time to get to know him. If you don't know the Father, it's time to get to know him. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, it's time to get to know him. There's no substitution. And oh, when you surrender to God and get the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, give the Lord your life, your life will change. Instantly. I'm not saying you never have a problem again. I'm not saying that, you know, everything will be perfect every single day. But I'm saying that you have a God that loves you and is with you every step of the way and will take you through the situations and help you raise above any area that you could ever think of. Because he loves you even more than you can ever imagine. Think about this, that God loves you way more than you can imagine. Way more. Way more than you can ever imagine. God loves you. If you think about how much somebody can love someone, even higher than that, God loves you. God loves you. I don't know who needs to hear that today. Because this wasn't the original direction I thought that the Lord was going to take me in for today. But God loves you. Some may not have been feeling love. Somebody been feeling forgotten. But God loves you. No matter what you've done in your past, God loves you. No matter the mistakes you've made, no matter the things that you're even thinking about doing right now, God loves you. And you don't have to do it. Somebody maybe even think about selling their body right now. God loves you. You don't have to. Don't do it. Somebody's out there thinking about selling that last bit of drugs. God loves you. Don't do it. There's so many things and so many decisions that we've been trying to make on our own. Come to Jesus. Just come to him. So, John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, us out here in this world, that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, He gave Him for us. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have ever, should have everlasting life. So if I believe on Jesus, I live for Him, I accept Him as my Lord and Savior. I live right, making a change in my life because God has cleansed me, He's made me anew, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says this, For if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And we talk about man, and that moment is talking about mankind, man and woman. So if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creature. Meaning the old stuff, as the word says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You ain't got to be the same. No matter what they called you before, no matter what you identified as before, God can make you new. You are a new creature in Christ. Just receive him. And for somebody, they say, well, you know what? How do I know that all of that was for me? And how do I know that he was thinking of me? So let's read Psalms 139, verse 14. It says, I will praise you. For I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knoweth very well. 
the New King James Version. And it's saying, the writer of this, David, somewhere, he's praising the Lord because he's fearfully and wonderfully made. God took out the time to make you. It wasn't by accident that you got here. It wasn't by accident the way you look. God took out the time and created every small detail about who you are. And anytime you say, I don't like this about me, I don't like the way my nose looks or my eyes look or my ears look at this, that, and the other. It's like saying, God, I don't like what you created. But the thing is, God created you so special that he wanted you to look exactly the way he made you. The eye color wasn't by accident. The eye shape, the nose shape wasn't by accident. God made you special. You are special. You are called of God. You are chosen of God to do something amazing. Let's walk in it. And if you're a person that says, you know what, I have not been living for the Lord. I know I haven't. I know of them, but I haven't been living for them. Please repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Wash me in your blood. Clean me up, O oh God, that I may be whole in you. From this day forward, I'm going to live for you for the rest of my days. I believe that you're God. I believe that Jesus is your son. And that he died and rose again with all power in his hand. If you're saying, Lord, I thank you for saving me. If you repeated that prayer after me, you are saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And somebody may be saying, you know what? I was saved, but I know that I have not been living up to my full potential in Christ. I've been putting other things before the Lord. I've been finding myself being distracted and putting things in my spirit that I shouldn't be. If that's you, we're going to pray. I'm going to pray for everyone, the person who just accepted Christ and the person that wants to grow closer and for those that may even want to come back. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we say thank you even right now. I thank you for my brothers and my sisters, oh God, who have accepted you. I thank you for those that are coming back to you even the more, oh God, recommitting themselves to you, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for spending quality time with you, oh God. Lord, I ask you first off, please forgive us of any sin we may have committed, knowingly or unknowingly. Oh God, we ask you to change lives on today, oh God. Oh God, we ask you to allow us to spend more time with you, oh God. Give my brothers and my sister, oh God, what you would have for them to do, oh God. Let them seek your face even the more, oh God. Lead them and guide them and strengthen them, O oh God, and touch their lives, touch their family, touch every situation. Move in every circumstance, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. O oh God, we thank you for overflowing their lives, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for them being part of this chosen generation, O oh God, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, and a holy nation, O oh God, as you say oh, in your word, O oh God. Lead us and guide us in your way, O oh God. Bless every family represented here. O oh God, we ask you even right now to do great and mighty things in the lives of your people, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Continue, O oh God, to make all things well, O oh God. Continue, O oh God, to make all things new, O oh God. Continue, O oh God, to make ways out of no way, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. O oh God, you're awesome. O oh God, you're marvelous, O oh God. You're magnificent and holy in every way, O oh God. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you, O oh God, for who you are. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die for our sins, O oh God. We love you so much, and we thank you. And we bless you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you are doing for us, O oh Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you all. This is Elder Diamond McClam with Throughout Generations Television Broadcast Ministry. So happy to be here with you all today. You all have a great and prosperous day and enjoy all that God has in store for you and your life. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day.